the bishop, the ministers, the representative from different kinds of, of, of nation here tonight. I just want to thank you for your support, for your prayer. And I believe God is going to do great things to you tonight. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. And to those who are watching this program live across the world, I just want to say to you that Jesus loves you so much. He died on the cross for your sins. Maybe you are watching tonight. You've been through a lot. You have problems in your life, in your family, whatever. You can name it. But all those names, amen, shall be bowed in the name of Jesus Christ. This is your night. Tonight is your deliverance. Tonight is your, is your salvation. Can you say amen? Tonight is your healing. Because Jesus is Lord over your life, over your deeds. Before the end of this program, I believe God is going to heal you. To save you tonight. Come on. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. All the way from the Philippine Islands. I'm pastoring for 24 years. May the grace of God. I really thank God for connecting me to this group. Because you know that God is really, amen, answers our prayers and tonight let us focus to the preaching of the word of god because the bible says the word of god shall not return void god created the heavens and the earth and everything the rock by his words and i firmly believe tonight for whether two or three gathering together in the mighty name of Jesus. His spirit and his presence is in the midst of them. I believe, amen, you came from work. You came, you know, you, you, you tired this afternoon. But you know, in the house of God, there is healing in the house of God. There is joy in the house of God. Amen. There is blessings in the house of God. There is the presence of God. Praise the name of Jesus. The team that God gave to our bishop in this convention is the great outpouring. It means that God is going to pour out what is the best for you and me. But you need to be empty. Oh. You need to have a brand new wine skin. You need to have, amen, a brand new vessel to be able, God, Feel, hallelujah, your light tonight in this companion. I firmly believe, I firmly believe this companion will end the 30th and your life will never be the same because God is going, amen, to fill you, amen, to fill you with his spirit, amen, and God's going to, to change you mightily because, hallelujah, there is a, lot, a people out there, amen, waiting for you. Can you say amen? I feel the presence of God tonight. And tonight, please open up your heart. I just want to preach about the three dangerous symptoms happen to the churches in the last days. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, Paul is talking to, to Timothy and he said, You should know this, Timothy. That on the last days, there will be difficult times. You know this, 
prophetic words that is spoke from the very mouth of the servant of the Lord is happening today in these last days. Because you know, Jesus he spoke about the signs of his coming and of the end of the world. One day with his disciples, when they were in the Mount of the Olives, his disciples asked Jesus, and they said, Rabbi, what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? Jesus mentioned about the earthquakes, the war, the rumors of war, the famine, the appearance of the false prophet. And you know, I just want to mention the three things. Dangerous symptoms happen to the churches in the last days. According to Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 to 14. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and as witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. You know in this text, we can see, amen, that this is the last days. Difficult times for the believers. Not only even what was, what was happen and happening in the world today. You know, amen, the evil is rampant in our society. Even here in, the, in, an, in America, the best nation around the world. You can see men in every state of America. Sin is rampant. There is to respect, amen, to the laws of the Lord. Because Satan is doing, and he's, he, he wants to do his best. And he doubles his time. So that, amen, hallelujah, the believers will confuse and will be affected, amen, on these symptoms and dangerous things. It will be happen, amen, and happening to our churches tonight. In these verses, Jesus is not only speaking to what will gonna happen, but also he is speaking about the state of the believers. In order to the believers to be aware in a way, in a way let us take a look some of the revelation causes why some believers then effective amen in, in God's kingdom. Because there are some believers, they, they, are, they are not effective. They do nothing in the kingdom of God. They go coming, coming out, amen, to the church. That's only sitting down, amen, in the chair. And they are useless for the kingdom of God. What is number one symptoms that we can see here in our text? It says the love of many will grow cold. It is referring to the believers. The love of many believers will grow cold. Because of lawlessness will abound. The love of many believers, many Christians, and you harvest just amen army. You are not except. There's no exemption here. You are maybe the one stalking to this verse. Because there is a mission from hell. It's not only to make not effective the believers, but also make them call for their love to God. That's the Bible says. Why the believers become called to serve God? 
Why the believers they don't effective in the kingdom of God? Why some believers they don't they don't do amen for the kingdom of God? Why some believers they don't give amen when when the pastor challenges to give for the for, for the convention? Some people came here they don't give even a dollar. Can you say amen? Why? They start taking off their eyes to Jesus and they begin drowning their, their spirit. Amen. They start taking off their eyes to Jesus. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We need to understand. Let us not take our eyes off to Jesus. In every situation, in every problems, in every difficulties, amen, in our lives, amen, hallelujah, in every persecution, we need to stand. We need to proclaim, amen, that we are Christian. Though, amen, persecution comes in this school, in the offices, in this nation, you need to stand up and be bold and be strong and show to the world that your eyes is fixed on Jesus Christ. No matter what, this is the last days some people begin, begin, begin to sink their faith like Peter the Apostles, amen. When he saw Jesus, amen, walking on the water, he said to Jesus, Lord, if you are, amen. He said in Matthew chapter 14, 28 to 31. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Sometimes, amen, hallelujah, we focus on Jesus. But when problem comes, when difficulties comes, when giving, when, when giving comes, we don't want to release our money. We cannot outgive God. God has so many things He's in store for us. Can you say amen? And when, when those things come, amen, we begin, amen, to, to, to misfocus on Jesus. We begin to, to look on our needs, on our clothes, on, to, on our children. And we take our eyes, focus on Jesus. They begin to compromise to the world. You know, mega churches, believers, they compromise to the world in the name of prestige and payment money. But we need to understand, let us be Christian. Let us show our light to the world. Let us become salt of the world. Can you say amen? Stand up in the truth. Buckle in our ways, amen. The truth, amen. The righteousness, the holiness in our lives. Can you say amen? We need to stand in the gap that we are the Christians. We are the soul in the life of this world. We're going to die serving God. Paul said in Philippians 1 verse, chapter 1 verse 21, For to me to live is Christ. Born to us to live is Christ. Don't compromise in this world. The Bible.
Bible says uh, in, in, in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 do not conform to the standard of this world in other translations do not copy the behavior of this world do not copy the behavior the attitude amen hallelujah the threat of this world if you do the trend, uh, you can you can bear it a uh, uh, carry by bread, amen. Uh, but let us stand in the word of God. Don't be compromised. Even in the Philippines, there are mega churches. They compromise in the name of prestige, money, and pain. But some little churches. We stand in the gap. We stand in the truth. Amen. We don't compromise. We don't compromise. There are so many people. So what? The way to, 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 to hell is wide and broad. And many is walking on that way but the road the way going to heaven you know is narrow praise the lord and few people amen amen walking and going to that way my friend is not about amen the prestige is not about even the money is not about the name is not about the trail of this world Satan is the God of this world. Satan is the God of this world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, the God of this world has blinded, has blinded the mind of the believers, to, of, of the unbelievers, and sometimes the believers. The spirit of Satan coming into the church. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 For if he who comes preaches another Jesus Whom we have not preached Or if you receive a different spirit Which you have not received Of a different gospel Which you have not accepted You may well put up with it Let us stick the truth can you say amen? And then they believe about the lies of the enemy and listen to the devil. I watch, you know, mega Taliban people, you know, preaching the gospel on TV. Sometimes they compromise their doctrine. They mix, amen, all kinds of religion. And you say, but we are a Christian. We're ready to die. We're ready to sacrifice. To jeopardize our lives. In the name of the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. They listen to the voice of the enemy. Like Eve in the garden of Eden. She deceived because she, list she listened. To what the devil Said unto here, there are, there are four kinds of voices that always speaks into our ear. There is a voice of the word, a voice of the devil, or the voice of yourself, and the very voice of God. Which of these voices are you going to listen Amen. And to entertain in your life. For me, I stand amen in the truth. I am willing to receive what God, what the Bible says, what, the, what God says in our life. Because amen, in God there is life. In God there is blessing. In God there is healing. In God there is truth. Amen. In God there is victory. You came here. You're discouraged. 
You are depressed. You are stressed. You are messed up. I just want to tell you tonight that in the word of God, hallelujah, there is power because the Bible says, hallelujah, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, amen. Nothing was made without the word of God. And then they begin to love the things in the world. The reason why many believers, their love for God, amen, grow cold. Because they begin to love the things in the world. The Bible says in John, verse, John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the loss of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. He does not love the world. Don't love material things. Don't love money. Money is the root of all evil. And some believers, they do their pain. And first, of different kinds of sorrows in their lives. Be content what you have and expect great miracle things from God. Amen. Be content what you have. Can you say amen? We as Filipino, I content what I have. I'm happy. In times of giving, I have only $100 in my pocket. I just want to buy something. But with the first night, I challenge. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't speak it because you're the boss of myself. I just want to challenge you American people. I have $100. I borrowed this, you know, the $100. Just for my pocket money. But you know, when... when Overseer Collins challenged the offering because I saw the needs of the convention. You purchased my ticket back in port. That's a lot of money. I saw the needs. I saw the hearts of your leader. He wants to be the needs. And he said, if I had golden it, you know, I can pull it out and give it to the offering. It is better to return back to the Philippines without it. It doesn't matter. The kingdom of God is a consist of any food or material things. It's hard to pull my wallet out of my pocket. And I, before I decide, you know, I think it many times. Because in the Philippine money, it is 4,500 pesos. I can buy two, two pants and two shirts. But because of the needs, I believe that I cannot outgive God. I believe that God, that God, that God has so many, so many, so many things. Hallelujah. I put it out because supposed to be the ministers, the deacons, the pastors, the ministers uh, could be able to persecute. You need to be empty. You need to be to to to, to wear out all your own things. Can you say amen? the kingdom of God. And tonight, Reverend Obersir calling Charles again. I don't want to see a long time you know, Charlie is the offering. I told Odette, you can accept card 
Because I have card, debit card, maintaining balance only, you know, in my, in my, if I touch that, the maintaining balance, problem. But I, I want to set the fire. I want to ignite. I want to ignite in this harvest army church. So I pull out again my, my wallet out of my, out my pocket and get, pick up the, the card. It's hard. It's hard. I can buy things for my children. We don't have enough in my, my, my we don't have house. We don't have car. We don't have good things. We sleep in the ground. We sleep in the ground. With a mattress. But it doesn't matter. I am willing. Praise God. Amen to be empty. I am willing to be empty. Hallelujah. Because if I am empty, if I am empty, God will give me more. God will fill it. I challenge you, musicians, singers, the ushers in Asherets, the greeters, the cleaners, the bishop, the ministers. I challenge you, you need to see the needs of this convention. Believe me, if you do that, if you release yourself, many people will come. Many people will come in this conference, in this convention, and they're gonna give, and they're gonna give, and they're gonna give because you set an example. Can you say amen? Bless us, oh Lord, bless us. God, God is releasing, God is releasing His spirit tonight. God is releasing, God is releasing. It is better that you don't have dinner tonight for the sake of the convention. The money for your dinner, you can give it for the convention. And I believe, and I believe, the Bible says in Luke 6.38, Give, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together. Hallelujah! 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 Seek not the things of this world. Be content what you have. If you have, you know, things in your life, come on. When we, when we are not in, in, when we are in the world, when we use drugs before, we sell, we sell, you know, our things for the name of drugs. Even our underwear we can sell just for the name of drugs. How about now? How about now? How about now? Beware that in the last day, your faith, your love for God will grow cold. Learn to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Learn. David said, he strengthened himself in the Lord. Number two. I just want to make a message short. 
Because in the Philippines, we have saying, blessed are those who preach short because you will be invited again. <laughs> for the visitors, not for the resident pastor, for the visitors. Number two, symptoms. The Bible says, in our text, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So number two, symptoms is lack of endurance, lack of patience in the life of the believers. The Bible says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. In God's kingdom, it doesn't matter how you start. The matter is how you finish the race. There are so many believers, they, are, they start good. But they finish horrible. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, Therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We are not in 100 meter dust. We are in marathon. Amen. Not, amen, not a sprint. Many believers like a sprinter. They start very fast in the middle. Can you see, amen? It doesn't matter how you start. The matter is how you finish the race. You need to be to, to have patient in everything and every single day, amen, in your wife, in your husband, in your children, amen, even in the church. That is number two symptoms that the enemy can cause us, and that is our downfall. Some believers does not have endurance as one of the qualification of harvester. And they have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time afterward when tribulation or persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they stumble. I've been saved for almost 30 years. But I never say, God, Lord, I want to quit and surrender for so many hearts in, hearts in life. I didn't say that to the Lord. Every day, I thank God for every grace and mercy that He bestows upon my life. I don't want to be too, too backslid. When I am holy, man, God is there to raise me again. Don't backslid. If you fall in temptation, come back to God. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavily burden, and I will give you rest. Come back to God. Maybe tonight there's some people here, they look warm. Their love is not the same as they started before. They don't have passion. They don't have fire, amen, for the Lord. But God said, come back to me, my children, my son. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to change you. Stop sitting, my friend. Let us endure all things. We must have endurance in our ministry. And prayer don't stop. Are you praying? Every day? Do you pray? Do you wake up early in the morning and pray? How many minutes? How many hours? I wake up every four o'clock, five o'clock, amen. I want to pray two, three hours a day. Can you say amen? I need endurance. Because myself I can do nothing 
There are so many temptations in life. There are so many wonderful things. There are so many good women. We need to stand in a patient while the Lord is coming. Amen. This is the last days, my friend. We need to fight a good fight of faith. Don't take a shortcut. Take a right way. Amen. Even though you face giants, you face the Amalekites, you face every enemy, amen. You need, hallelujah, to face the enemy, hallelujah. Don't back out. Take your sword, amen. Take your shield, amen, hallelujah. And fight the devil. And fight the devil. Maybe you have a struggle in your prayer life. Don't stop praying. The best is yet to come. God is, He answers the prayers. The prayers of the righteous man are much. Jeremiah 33 verse, they call unto me. And I will answer thee. Are you calling to God? The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, Whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe. And not doubt, and you shall have it. I was, you know, I was praying for, for almost a year. Lord, give me a bigger building for the church. For me, amen, when I see the congregation, we cannot be able, amen, to find a bigger building because that costs a lot of money. But you know, one day, my prayer answered by God. My prayer Bishop Collins and the Harvest Army Church team went to the Philippines. I thought for the revival only, six nights of revival. That time I don't have money to feed them, to give them, you know, to, to rent some car and, you know, so that they be able to, I can drive them. I am willing. But he told me, I am not here for the revival. Because I, 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 I saw this four years ago. I have vision from God. And he asked me how much I can find the good place for, for our church. I said the price. And my wife is surprised. My children are surprised. My congregation is surprised. Because in God, prayer is a matter Prayer is important. Don't be discouraged. God can use the ravens. God can use, amen, the unbelievers. God can use, amen, uh, whoever to meet your prayers. To be able to prove you and I that He is the God of heaven. That He is the God, amen, uh, answers prayer. Tony, stop in mission. Those of you don't go to mission field, I invite you to come to the Philippine Islands. The most beautiful people in the world are Filipino. The most hospitable people in the world are Filipino. The most good-looking people in the world are Filipino. Because I am Filipino. Come, we're going to serve you. We're going to serve you. Whatever we have, you will never be the same if you go to the Philippines. I invite you to come to October. Come on, empty yourself. Sometimes leave your husband, leave your children. I leave my family three weeks. Can you say amen? amen? For the sake of the gospel. I need to endure things. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't stop giving. Don't stop submit your life to your leaders. 
There is only one God, one baptizing, one doctrine, and one leader. If there are two leaders, that's monsters. There's only one leader. Bishop Dr. Collins. You need to love him. You need to serve him. You need to protect him. You need to follow him. Because in to myself, he's really, really a man of God. A man of God. Thank you for blessing the Filipino people, Bishop Collins. They never forget you. For six nights, for the first time, they keep coming to the revival nights. I want to have next time 15 days. 15 days. Be patient like a farmer. Before they harvest the crop, they, you know, they follow the ground, they put the seed, they water in the plant, and they wait for the harvest. If you plant rice, three months, six months, you are waiting. Like a woman, single woman waiting for the one who can, you know, say to him, will you marry me? My friend, wait for the great harvest. Harvest army church, you're going to have churches across the world, around the world. Believe me, because you plant the seed, you plant your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Especially to the Asian people. I believe that your labor in the Lord will return void. Hallelujah. Last things. Numero tres. Number three. According to our text, in this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. The last sign that Jesus spoke about his coming is preaching the gospel to be able to witness people around the world. So there is no reason when they face the judgment they don't say, they don't say, Lord, we, no one preached the gospel to us. This is the last things, the symptoms. The reason why I mentioned this because Jesus spoke this. Number three, preaching the gospel is not the priority of the churches today. They prioritize the good building. They prioritize the good, beautiful instruments. They prioritize their clothes, the fancy clothes. They prioritize their programs in the television. But they don't prioritize the very gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to preach to all the nations. The Harvest Army Church is obeying the great commandment of God, the great commission of God. And Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go ye into the whole world, amen, and preach the gospel to them. And that is the word we should take. And we are prepared on October 3. We're going to have parade. We're going to have, we're going to have cars, Amen. Proclaiming the world mission day. I already had a meeting with the pastors. In the evening, we're gonna we're gonna open the new church. 
the new church. There is my one friend of mine. He let his building, you know, to use as a, as a, as a, a church. So October 3 is the grand opening. In the afternoon, the World Vision Day, we're going to send the video. Praise the name of Jesus. If there is a mission, there is a provision. Can you say amen? God can meet your needs. Hello. This is the last sign of his coming because he wants all the people to get saved. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count is slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We don't have enough time. To reach up the word. Preach the word of God. Because according to Paul in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed to preach the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. First to the Jews. Second to the Greek and the barbarian people. Can you say Amen. Preaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. If you don't preach, people, they don't say. How can they hear if you're not preaching? How can they believe if you don't hear even the gospel? Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the preaching of the word of God. Preach to your neighbor, to your family members, to your co-workers, to your co-office mate. Preach the gospel every day, every night. Thank God for the Harvest Army. We, we do a street preaching since the first day. I started church in 1991. I was only 24 at that time, 24 years old. But different when, when the Harvest Army came without microphone, without bullhorn, they have a big vocal cords. This time, Sunday morning before the service, one hour. Every churches of the gateway church, they preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for the power. Amen. That you have given to us. Thank you. Preach the gospel. We are the watchmen, the trumpeters. World Vision Day has a cause. World Vision Convention has a cause. Planting churches has a cause. Everything about the world has a cause. Don't withhold your money for the Lord. You and I need to work together to build this last sign that our Lord spoke about. In these last days, God's concern is the salvation of the lost people to make it possible you and I are partners in this endeavor. Can you say amen? There's no excuse if I came from the third world country. Philippines is third world country. A lot of poor. When we eat, only water, some Filipino, they eat twice a day. Noodles and bread. There's no juice, there's no milk, some of them. Only water direct from the faucet. Because our government 
it's not good. They rob the money. They rape the Filipino people. They, they took the money. But that is not an excuse for me to come over here not to give for the kingdom of God. Shall we stand tonight? Shall we stand tonight? Praise the name of Jesus. May I ask the musician, please come up here. Come on. <clears throat> I challenge you this evening. If God convicted you in this preaching tonight, I just want to ask you to come and surrender your life before God here in the altar. Don't be hesitant. Don't be hesitant. Don't hesitate tonight. Surrender your life. Maybe your faith, your love to God is, is not the same. You're lukewarm. Maybe, amen, you don't have endurance in your life. Maybe you, your, the preaching of the word is not your priority. Maybe you challenge to go to the mission. Amen tonight. Amen. As the singers come up here, amen. I don't want to, you know, come up here. Surrender your life before God. I'm going to pray for you tonight. You have needs? Come up here. Surrender your life before God. Stand up here in the altar. I'm going to pray for you tonight. Don't grieve the Spirit of God tonight. Don't say that you're Filipino, I'm American. Don't say that. Come up here. God Hallelujah. is going to change your life tonight. From now on, your life will never be the same. It could, it could open your heart. God loves you so much. He died on the cross for your sins. Do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Please repeat this prayer after me. Close your eyes and repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you with faith in my heart. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You shed your blood to cleanse me. To cleanse me from all of my un unrighteousness. I open my heart and accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness and salvation tonight. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Believe in God. You are forgiven now. You are cleansed now. Father, I pray tonight. Set him free, oh my God. Set him free, oh Lord God. Let your power, God. Penetrate his soul and his spirit and deliver him from every works of the enemy. Because tonight, this body is your temple. Release, oh God, this man. Raise your hand. Release, oh God. Release, oh God. Yes, I destroy the works and the deceiving spirits in Jesus' name. Release, O oh God. Receive the Spirit of God tonight. Receive it in Jesus' name. Tonight, for the last time, come up here, I will pray for you. Amen. Those who need prayer, those who want to go to the mission field, 
Please come up here. Come on. As we sing the song, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Worship God, worship God. God, in the name of Jesus, challenge her to go to the harvest field, oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. How do I pray, God? Oh, yes. healing right now. Receive right now. Healing. Healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I pray you. Lay the Lord God be free from every fear in Jesus' name. I command you, the spirit of fear, to get out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Worship God, worship God, worship God, worship God. Worship God. Raise your voice and your hands before God. Come on, church. Let us worship the Father tonight.
Father, I pray your permission. Your permission, oh God. Yes. Yes. and diseases. Receive it as you preach the word of God, as you preach the gospel event. You have the power to lay your hands on the sick people in this and recover in Jesus' name. Come on! Once again! Worship God. Speak to God. Speak to God. And receive tonight your provision, your healings, your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it tonight. Receive it tonight. Receive it tonight. Your new job. Receive tonight. Receive tonight. Receive. Receive your gift from God. Preach the word. Don't worry about your needs. There is a provision. From God for your life. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Come on. Healings. Healings. Healings is happening tonight. Healings. Healings is happening tonight. Healings is happening tonight. Healings. Healings! Receive your healings! Receive your healings! Receive right now! Receive the power of God! Receive it! Receive it! Shanda Kaya! Receive it! Receive it! Yes! Deliverance! Yes! Receive the power of God! Receive the power of God. Receive the power of God. Hallelujah. Ah, the Lord is moving tonight. The Lord is moving tonight. Come on. This is your night. This is your night tonight. This is your Come on, yes, oh God. I know that there's no time, amen, but let's proceed to the Holy Spirit tonight. Oh, hallelujah, God. Yes, receive the power of God. Receive. In this whole day of the from now until the 30th 
If God is speaking to you to help, financially, this convention, I believe God is speaking to you tonight. Even the televiewers tonight across the world, if you feel that God is speaking to you to help this convention, don't be hesitate. God will gonna give it to you hundred folds of blessings. Tomorrow, show up. Come tomorrow night. Amen. As we sing this song, Bishop Collins, I give it to Bishop Collins.